All right, so today we're going to talk about creating selections from the luminosity of your image. And don't worry, I'm going to explain all of this. I'm going to show you how to do it via channels, and we're going to show you a key command, which is no big secret. But I really want to push the key command on this one and a couple other key commands, because when you start memorizing these things, these functions don't become as esoteric as they may seem. You just quickly do it and you roll along. Today's focus on the different images that we have, we're going to talk about the different benefits of protecting highlights quickly. Sometimes you want to protect highlights manually, but we're going to protect them very quickly to get different results um, and to get more pleasing results in some cases. But let's start with what the heck is selecting the luminosity of your image. It has everything to do with creating a selection from exactly what you're looking at. Now, it's very important. I like to put it that way because at the moment, I've got just a background layer and there's the image and that's fine. But you could have multiple layers. Uh, in other videos, we talk about how you put a gradient map out there, maybe a black and white gradient map. And then what you see, in fact, I'll do that real quick. We've done this in other videos. So if I, if I did this, for example, uh, you know what? Let's go the other way. If I did this, for example, okay, and then I select the luminosity of what I'm looking at, that means I'm going to select what you see, in this case, the white areas, which is the window, the shoes, a little bit of the leg. I create a very, very bright range luminosity mask if I were to select what I'm looking at, right? Okay, so let's throw that layer away. We don't need it because, yeah, when you create other layers like that, gradient maps and other things, um, we've, we've talked about that in the channel many times and there's a lot of use. But the luminosity of the image in and of itself, regardless of where you are in your workflow, can be hugely, hugely beneficial quickly. Now, how do we do that? Okay, so we don't have our channels uh, palette open. Go to Window and go to Channels. The absolute fastest way is hold down Command or Control and click the thumbnail of the RGB channel. Click. You usually will see a selection running like this. Now, if your image is really, really dark, um, it might prompt you and say, hey, no more than 50% of the pixels, blah, blah, blah. Give you this little prompt that it does, meaning that it will have a selection, but you won't see any of these running lines. Okay, so this is it. We now have the luminosity selected. There are so many things that we can do with this, but the first thing I want you to do is inverse that selection. Not invert, but inverse. I'm going to go back to the layers just to be ready for it. And that key command is Shift Command I. Shift Command I. What does that mean? That means I've selected the inverted version of the selection, okay? By taking the active selection and inversing it, now I have an inverted selection. Now, what can I do with this? Okay, well, let's understand what I have first of all. What I did by selecting the luminosity, let's walk you through it, okay? Selecting the luminosity, we go to channels and we click, hold down command or control and click the RGB channel, right? We're gonna talk about key commands in a minute. All right, now let's, uh, let's visualize this, right? So one way that we can visualize it is with the selection running, let's put a, sele a solid color out. We're gonna make it pure white. You can already see kind of where we're going. Underneath that, I'm gonna put a solid color of black. There you go. So what does that mean? That means that the white area is masked out with the uh, actual, you know, luminosity of the image, right? The white layer. So there you go. You can see that I've created a black and white version of the image in kind of a cool way, but that's because I selected the luminosity of it, right? Now, if I were to inverse, that's the equivalent of inverting the mask. That is now the selection that I just created a second ago. We're going to create again. What does this afford us? Well, look at it. The highlights, the windows and various other places are dark and they're black. Okay, so that's going to protect those highlights immediately, right? Anything dark is going to be protected. Anything lighter or white is not, right? So therefore, we can do different things with that, for example. Bear with me, I know this could be confusing. Now, we talked about key commands. Instead of going back to channels and holding down command or control and clicking RGB, we're going to do option command or option control two, option command two. That automatically gets us a selection of what we're looking at. Okay, so there it is. We have a selection running. Now, another key command, shift command I. Now I've got the inverse of it, right? The reason why I'm going over this so often is that I do this subconsciously, like quickly, because I've done it so often. And I want you to get to that point, you know, um, option command two, shift command uh, I, boom. Now we have a mask that, quote, protects the highlights, if you will. So let's prove that. One of the fastest ways to prove that it was something like levels, which can be pretty destructive. Um, or it can be if you're not careful with it. I'm going to put on luminosity blend mode. All right, so what do we have here? We have a levels that now is masked out to protect the highlights. What does that benefit us? Well, let's take a look. Let's go to levels, and we're going to take the bright slider and move it in. We're brightening our image. 
okay? But you notice everything else is getting brighter, even like in a nice contrasty way because we're bringing in the right slider, but the windows aren't completely blown out. How can we prove this? Hold down shift and click your mask temporarily. Ooh, now it's blown out. I'm not saying that that looks bad, okay? But sometimes you want your highlights protected. Let's say you think, I want a lot more detail in the image here. There's a lot of lost detail and I feel like the shadows are too dark, but I don't wanna just make them too hazy. So I protect the highlights and then I brighten from there. Don't forget, you can also bring in the dark areas, bring in that mid-tone and still brighten some more. And now you create this sort of brightening effect that adds some pop and contrast to the image without blowing out your highlights. Okay, again, if I hold down shift and click the mask, you can see, oh, it blew it out. Here, we protect it. Now, this is a very subtle thing, okay? Obviously, if you go too far, things can get fake very, very quick, okay? You don't necessarily want that, but you can see, even with that extreme, you can see how the highlights are being protected. Hold down shift and click the mask, and you see they're not being protected. So that's a fast way, like, let me just reset that. If I'm looking here and I go, I wanna brighten everything overall, but I wanna protect those windows. I don't want them to blow out. That's one way. Here's another image where obviously you think, uh, I wanna brighten this and keep contrast, but I'm really worried about those fringes around her. And of course the background, well, very quickly, option command or option control two, shift command or shift control I. Now it's selected, I can go to levels. And when I brighten, I'm still protecting the highlights around it. Okay, by the way, levels is just one tool. You can do others. Hold down shift to turn off the mask temporarily, click. You can see we've lost our perimeter completely. This is a quick way to protect it, but still allows to you know, make some modifications to it. We're also gonna talk about a fast way to modify your mask as well if you need uh, more protection. You'll see in a minute. Now in this image and the next one, I wanna talk about how we can color grade with the inverse of the luminosity. So let's do it again. Option command or option control two, shift command or shift control I. Now we have a selection of the inverse, cool. Inverse of the luminosity. Let's go to light curves, okay? Boom. Now, as you can see, look at our mask. It's a pretty bright image, so there's not a whole lot. Uh, as you can see, we have the pure highlights protected pretty well overall, okay? And everything else blended in the middle. So let's say we use curves to color grade, right? I'm actually gonna put it in color blend mode. All right, so let's say we do a little bit of color grading here of some sort. Doesn't entirely matter. We're just trying to make something look cool. That's super warm, but that's all right. We're just gonna roll with that. Something like that. All right, cool. Went from there to there, very subtle grade. We've protected the highlights, which sometimes is not just about the brightness of the highlights when it comes to protecting them. Sometimes it keeps your highlights neutral, which makes a color grade often look more natural. If that's what you're hoping for, right? Because highlights, especially bright ones, tend to do better neutral. Of course, color grading is extremely subjective, so I'm not trying to tell you what to do. But every now and then when I color grade, that's what I want to do. If I turn it off, you see what happened. Now the highlights get color grading in them. When I turn it on, they're a little more preserved. Now keep in mind this sort of protective idea, let's go to this image. You might think to yourself, well, if I'm gonna color grade an image then, uh, and I protect the highlights and I shouldn't modify the highlights. Well, let me explain why you actually you should. Let's go again, option command or option control two, and then shift command or shift control I, there it is. Now let's go ahead and go to like selective color, okay? because I want to show you something. Let's say I go to the whites, which is the highlights. And you might think, well, if I'm protecting the highlights, why, why grade them? Well, for one, the range of these, of the tool versus the mask are not going to be identical. And second of all, this limits how much color you get into the highlights, but it might be something cool. Okay, so I'm going to take down some of the magentas and the yellows and add some, some cyans into the whites. Very, very subtle because it's blended in. If I hold down shift, and click, you'll see it's a lot stronger, the cyan, right? Doesn't matter, it's just we wanna blend things in. The, the takeaway there is don't avoid the highlight or the white slider if you use selective color or color bounce or something like that. Just because you're protecting the highlights doesn't mean it's bad. So let's add some color there. Maybe uh, some more color there of some kind. And again, on the whites, I'm actually gonna add quite a bit. There you go, cool. So we have a grade that I personally think is looking kind of nice. Okay, cool. As you can see, let's take a look at the mask, hold down option and click. There is our mask, very much protecting the windows, they're pure black, and the fringe highlights are also being protected. Now within reason, that can be very, very useful when you color grade. So I went from there to there, simple little grade, nothing too strong, but if I hold down shift and turn off the mask, 
is just a little bit stronger or maybe I don't want it to be stronger. Now, I'm going to delete it again and create it again because we can also do the following. Let's say these are just examples, guys. Let's say I have a selective color and I have a, oh, I don't know, uh, color balance. And I'm going to put both of those on color blend mode. And then I have a levels, which I'm going to put on luminosity. This is, let's say this is my finalization workflow, right? Okay, cool. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in option command, option control two, shift command or shift control I, there it is. I'm going to group all of these mastering layers, finalize. And while that folder group is selected and the mask is running, I mask it. Now, everything I do underneath here, even bringing up the highlights, see how the windows don't completely blow out? I can turn it off, prove that the windows blow out, but see, they're being protected. And if I go to color balance, even if I choose highlights, it's still somewhat protecting that. Go to midtones. This is just an example workflow. By no means this is something I say you must do. It's just an example workflow. Just kind of get some kind of some kind of look so we can see an example here. Okay, something like that. Cool. Everything now that we're doing preserves those highlights and it also blends in the color work a little more naturally into the shadows and less and less into the highlights. Again, meaning that our highlights tend to stay neutral. You should experiment with this because every now and then it can make color grading more satisfying, if you will. Now, not always, not always, but sometimes it gives you the exact pop that you need without ruining your highlights. Okay, so if I hold down shift and click, you'll see now that image is a different feel. It's not necessarily not saying that it's wrong. It's just a different feel, right? As opposed to this, which protects uh, the highlights, not just the brightness of it, but the grade itself, right? So that kind of idea to me is something that should happen fairly quickly. And this is why I say, you know, we should learn the key commands, right? So if I'm here, like I said earlier, if I'm here like, oh, I want to brighten this, but I want to protect it. Okay, so what I'll immediately do is da -da, da -da, and then levels. And then I'll come in here and I'll experiment with that. Yeah, okay, I like that, cool. And then I'm done. I've brightened and protecting. Now keep in mind too, that when you do the luminosity, you're of the image, rather you make a selection from the luminosity, you have a nice gradation. So it's not just a hard edge. You can do a subject selection if you really want to protect the background, but that could be a little bit of a hard edge. And in most situations, that's not going to be ideal. By selecting the luminosity of the image, you generally will work with a little bit of a smoother result. So there it is. I'm brightening the image, but protecting the perimeter. If I turn it off, you can see it's quite different. Now, again, this is just a suggestion based on common problems that I find, which is usually like highlight protection. And we're going to talk about other ways and other things we can do with these selections too. Keep in mind, if you have a subtle result, um, for example, let's go back here. If you have a subtle result, let's go ahead and select the luminosity uh, and then we're going to inverse it. Okay. And we're going to put curves. Okay. Now let's look at our mask. If we hold on option and click, there's our mask. Pretty subtle. Couple things we can do to maximize a mask, which isn't always perfect, but we can maximize it by doing a, I forgot where it is over here. There it is, auto contrast, okay? So that's gonna be shift option command or shift alt control, okay? And then we hit L, there you go. That maximizes the blacks and maximizes the whites. It just really um, expands the contrast of, in this case, the mask. It's a function for anything, but in this case, the mask maximizes it, which means that as you saw, let me undo, it went from pretty well protected highlights um, and then the shadows are pretty well exposed. And if I auto contrast, the shadows get brighter. In other words, the selection of the shadows get brighter and the sh highlights get darker, meaning that they're more protected, right? So sometimes you'll want to do that. You'll want to go straight to your mask. Let's just try to do something here. There you go. There's a little bit of a grade. You want to go straight to your mask and do an auto contrast. So there it is off which looks cool. And there it is on, which is a little more subtle, protecting the highlighted area. So what does that mean? Okay, let's review real quick. If I look at the image and go, I want to color gray, but I want to leave my highlights uh, neutral. And I want to make sure that I'm maximizing my protected range. Okay, so check this out. Option command two, shift command I, choose whatever tool I want, go to curves, click on the mask, shift option command L or whatever the PC equivalent of. And now I know I've created a quick mask and I've maximized the highlights. Now, again, what you're effectively doing is a luminosity mask. That's what you're doing. Okay. But this is just a fast way to quickly create a nice blended mask for color grading, a nice blended mask for highlight preservation, etc. You can make manual masks when you need to. But as you see in all these four examples, 
a quick selection of the luminosity and the inverse of it does the trick. Mm -hmm.